begin this process. The next two ATPs that are produced represent a net energy gain. This is a net energy gain. We are now ahead by two ATPs. So even though in glycolysis, which involves the splitting of a glucose molecule in half, forming two pyruvate sugars, even though four ATPs are produced, we're only ahead by two. You can think of this similarly to comparing gross income versus net income. The gross was four ATPs. The net, the net gain that we're actually ahead by is just two ATPs after we subtract out the two that it took to begin this process. Now the second thing that happens in splitting this sugar apart into two pyruvate sugars, not only are, do we have a net gain of two ATPs, but two NADs. And you'd say, what, what are NADs? NAD is that B vitamin niacin. The role of this niacin, this NAD, is to transfer hydrogen atoms from the sugar molecule ultimately to oxygen. Two NADs, each of them pick up a pair of what I call hot potato hydrogen atoms. I like to refer to them as hot potato hydrogen atoms because they're being pulled right off the not the fire, but off the sugar molecule. And they're high in energy, these hot potato hydrogen atoms and electrons. Now, again, the role of the NAD is to transfer those hydrogens onto oxygen. We're going to tell you more about that in just a moment. So, in summary, the process of glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. It does not require oxygen in order to split the glucose in half forming two sugars uh, called pyruvate sugars or pyruvic acid. Each one of them is three carbon atoms big. At the end of glycolysis, we've got a net gain of two ATPs. We're ahead by two ATPs. That's the whole per process. The whole purpose of cellular respiration is to make ATP. And some of these hot potato hydrogen atoms have been removed from the sugar molecule. <laughs> That's called glycolysis. What happens next depends upon whether there is oxygen available or there is not oxygen available. If oxygen is available, we will move on to what is called aerobic respiration, which occurs in the mitochondria of the cell. However, if oxygen is not available, this entire process of cellular respiration stops. But one thing has to happen before this whole process shuts down. And that's what to do with these hydrogen atoms that were removed from the sugar molecule by NAD. Because we said that the, what NAD is supposed to do with those hydrogens is to transfer them onto oxygen. But what if oxygen is not available to the muscle cell? What is it going to do with these hot potato hydrogen atoms? And the answer is, what it does is called fermentation. So, uh, at the end of glycolysis, where two, uh, one glucose molecule has been split apart, forming two sugars called pyruvate sugars or pyruvic acid, what happens next depends upon whether oxygen is or is not available. If oxygen is available, the pyruvate sugars will enter the mitochondria of the cell and they, and they will be broken apart in a process called aerobic respiration. Called aerobic because it only occurs if oxygen is available. In aerobic respiration, those two pyruvate sugars will be totally broken apart into carbon dioxide molecules. However, if the muscle cells or cells do not have oxygen available to them, so in that case, the pyruvate sugars will be converted into lactic acid. Now, this reaction is called fermentation. It's called a fermentation reaction. It occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. This line that we've drawn here the reactions above this dashed line occur in the cytoplasm of the cell and occur with, without oxygen. 
and those, those reactions below the dashed line are part of aerobic respiration that occur in the uh, mitochondria, which occur only if oxygen is available. What is the purpose of fermentation? Why are the pyruvate sugars converted into lactic acid? The purpose of it is this. <clears throat> At the end of glycolysis, two NADs, which are really the B vitamin niacins, were each holding a pair of hot potato hydrogen atoms and electrons. We said that what NAD is supposed to do is to transfer those hot potato hydrogen atoms ultimately onto oxygen. But if oxygen is not available, the question is what is the NAD supposed to do with these hydrogen atoms that it's holding onto? And the answer is the NADs transfer those hydrogen atoms right back on to the pyruvate sugar and when the pyruvate sugar gains these two additional hydrogen atoms that came from the sugar to begin with, that turns them into lactic acid. That's what's shown right here. If this is the structure of the pyruvate sugar or pyruvic acid, you'll notice it's three carbon atoms big, and here we show the NAD with its two hydrogen atoms. It transfers those two hydrogen atoms right onto the middle carbon of the pyruvate sugar, turning it into lactate sugar or lactic acid. Here's those two hydrogen atoms that came from the NAD, H2. So this is called lactate sugar or lactic acid, and now we have just NAD. Now, this fermentation reaction is reversible. What do I mean by reversible? It occurred when the, there was not oxygen available so that the NAD temporarily transferred those pair of hydrogens onto the pyruvate sugar, turning it into lactate sugar, lactic acid. When oxygen becomes available again, the NAD will pick up those pair of hydrogens from the lactic acid and turning that lactic acid back into the pyruvate sugar and now the NAD can transfer these hot potato hydrogen atoms onto oxygen. So this is a reversible reaction that occurs when there's a lack of oxygen, the pyruvate sugars are turned into the lactic acid. When oxygen becomes available again, the lactic acid is converted back to pyruvate sugar. And this is simply involves this NAD transferring the hydrogens or picking up those hydrogens from that uh, lactic acid. Okay. An application of exactly what we've been talking about occurs when you're exercising. When you're exercising and you're breaking apart sugars with oxygen very rapidly to make ATP, your muscles may not be getting enough oxygen, as much oxygen as they require. Whenever the muscle cells are not getting enough oxygen, then the glucose can only be broken down as far as pyruvate sugar and that pyruvate sugar is temporarily converted into lactic acid. This accumulation of lactic acid in our muscles when we're exercising is believed to contribute to cramping of the muscles and fatigue as this lactic acid accumulates within the muscle tissue. Furthermore, this explains one other thing. 